All right, so I'm recording this. I'm Sam Bown, and I've got Irvin is here to help you, InfoSec Irvin, and he's also in the chat. And I know Caitlin's here, and I think Liz is here also. So you can reach us on Twitter, or you can reach us in the Zoom chat. And to get started, you go to samsclass.info, where you've already been, and just click this, Introduction to Attack Techniques. That opens a page here where you've got a CTF. So there's a scoreboard and a place to submit flags, and there's a bunch of challenges here. And the challenges have flags you find on them and put them up to get points. And what I'm going to do is introduce the general thing now, and I'm now going to uh, introduce the sections one by one and accumulate videos here. So you can view videos of what's on through. So the most important thing is the whole reason this is a CTF is so you will get the most out of it. Um, instead of having a lecture where I present one line of information, I want to have a lot of challenges at all different levels. So each of you can just zip down to whatever is the right level for you. I want everybody to be able to find something new. That's why I think CTFs are so popular in this business because um, everybody comes in with a different level of prior knowledge. And so, some one lecture teaching one topic is not going to interest everybody. Some people are just beginners and want the easy stuff. Some people are quite advanced and want the hard stuff. Um, so zip down to whatever level is interesting to you. This is not the kind of CTF like the DEF CON CTF where all the challenges are brand new and they're really hard and you're proving how great you are by being wonderful at them. This is just a trick to make people do homework. All this stuff is not particularly new. Some of it is from textbooks. So, you know, it's not, you can even Google and find answers to some of them, like the bandit challenges, there's write-ups. So, you know, it's not, I, as far as the competition goes, I wouldn't take it very seriously there. But, um, so the most important thing is find something that's new to you that you want to learn. So there's basics. If you need to know things like how to use the command line, then that's, or binary, then this is where you start. Those, that's like knowing the alphabet before you get going. So there's some challenges just so you learn binary. Uh, there's a very nice introduction to Bash Linux here, which I just found out recently, and it's wonderful that it has little pages of information that teach you the basics of how to use the Linux command line. And then there's the famous bandit challenges where you SSH into a bunch of accounts on a server, and at each level, there's a password hidden in a more and more concealed way in the file system and you have to learn more and more file system commands to find it. And then there's a PowerShell version of the same thing here. So you can practice um, learning how to find things in PowerShell and execute more and more complicated PowerShell commands. So those are good if you want to learn the basics. Then to do hands-on hacking, you need to set up a cyber range. You, you can choose one type of range to set up. The simplest one is to just get two Linux, two cloud servers, a Linux and a Windows server. If you use the Google Cloud, it's free if you have a credit card, but the Windows server is not free. It'll cost you a few dollars to run a Windows server for a day. So this would cost you a few dollars. You can do it with local servers, but then you will have local networking issues, which you, um, my students have trouble with uh, frequently. And you can make a hybrid network, which is what I'm using, where I use Google Cloud for all the Linux servers, but I use a local Windows machine for the other. And then I um, connect them with a VPN. So you'll set up one of those types to get going, and then you can start doing challenges. The command injection challenges, many of them don't even require any server at all. All you need is a web browser, so you can start there. Uh, then there's Metasploit challenges, and including making your own Metasploit module, which is nice. And then some networking challenges where you practice network forensics and uh, network hacking with things like Wireshark and Nmap and Scapey. Then some cryptography challenges. And then I have some Android stuff at the end for people who want that, but I think most people probably won't get that far. So that's a general overview of how you get started. And I'm gonna stop this recording and put it here.